Amen. Shalom, shalom, once again, in the name of Jesus. We want to thank God for this day. Can we pray? Father, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your faithfulness. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you that you are our God and our Savior. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, for your word this morning that is going to transform us in the name of Jesus. Equip us, O Jehovah, for the great work that you have in store for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you and we celebrate your goodness and your faithfulness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We will get our scripture reading from the book of Acts. Chapter 2, from verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come. Mm, let me just change the version because I need it in another version. Okay, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Um, we all know that when Jesus was leaving and his disciples were, were crying that he should not leave them, he gave them a promise. And in that promise, he said they should wait until they've been given power. And here we see that the disciples didn't wait from a lower level. They took a step, both physically and spiritually, to go to the upper room. They climbed some steps. Those of us who have been to Jerusalem, we have seen that when you have to go to the upper room, you move from the common place from the ground level and you go up the steps to that particular room. And when they got there, they had an expectation. They were in one accord. They were in unity. They had the same goal. And that goal was to receive power so that they can fulfill the mandate that they have been given. The other thing that we find here is that as they were sitting and waiting with an expectation, all of them having heard the word and they wanted to see the word of God being manifested, each one of them wanted to receive something. They also heard the sound of a, a mighty wind because their ears were opened. They were ready to hear and take any instruction that the Lord was giving them. They saw because the appearance of tongues of fire, because their eyes were opened. You know, you cannot something, not see something appearing if your eyes are closed. And we see that in their unity, 
in their one accord, in their seeking for the double grace more than what Jesus had given them. Because now they were given an instruction to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. They needed something that was going to enable them to go out and make those disciples. God met their expectation and filled them with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And we see that when the fire fell, they were cleansed from all impurities. The fear that Peter had demonstrated before Jesus was crucified was no longer there. Instead, he's the one that stepped out and started ministering to the people about the same Jesus that he had denied before. And from that time, they were all equipped. They called go out with boldness to minister the gospel. Revival had broken out and they saw signs, wonders following them. People were healed. They had a deeper revelation of the word of God. They had the wisdom on how to minister to the different types and or groups of people that they were going to disciple. You know, the work of the ministry was no longer a strife, but a joy to them. They were now committed even to die for the gospel. They were consumed by the love of God. They were consumed by the love for the nations. The fire that set on their tongues cleansed their mouth from all other filthy talks that they were doing before. Instead, they were cleansed and the fire of God came out whenever they were speaking. We see that when the fire came, no one remained sleeping or gossiping, but they all took the instruction and they went out to do the work of the ministry. The revival that had fallen was fire in their bones like it did with Jeremiah, they were now ready for whatever that could come across their lives as long as they were preaching the gospel. We see them being arrested, put in prison, but they never kept quiet. Why? Because the fire was burning in them. Their strength was not without, but their strength was from within and going out, covering them so that they were strengthened in their inner men and their minds were also strengthened because they had a goal. They were empowered for a particular goal. And in that strength, they could overcome all the obstacles that could come their way to stop them. They were unstoppable. They defied the laws of their day. They overrode the systems of the world, even if they were beaten because the fire was within them. They were baptized in the fire. 
they could not keep quiet and start to nest their pain. Instead, they would even praise God in the midst of the pain because the fire was within them. We see in Matthew 3, verse 11, when John was speaking to the people, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. If there is one ingredient that is missing in the body of Christ in these last days, if we really want to see the double grace for global relevance, we all need this ingredient, which is the fire of the Holy Ghost. We do have the Holy Spirit, but unfortunately, because he's not coupled with fire, we have come to a point whereby we even disobey him. At times when we even do our, our tongues, you realize that they are just mental tongues. They are not being propelled by the fire of God that is deep within us. We have made things and even the Holy Spirit himself a religious activity. Why? Because we are called. We don't have the fire that is burning deep within us to push us out of our comfort zone and do the work of the ministry. As we have been called in this platform to disciple nations, we need the fire of God. We need the upper room experience so that even those that are fearful will be empowered or endowed with the capacity to step out of their comfort zone and bring the nations. The Peter anointing is still available for us to tap into. And in one sermon, we can bring 3,000 or even more souls into the kingdom of God. For too long, we have prayed in our tongues, but we have not seen much results. May the Lord help us to pray in tongues that are coupled by, with his fire. And that is when we are going to see great things happening in our dispensation. The level of evil that is outside, it doesn't need casual believers. It needs believers that are filled by fire. And when we are filled by fire, we will be like our forefathers who turned this world upside down with the fire because where the fire is, it consumes. It's time for us to cry out for the God who is the consuming fire to consume us, spirit, body, and soul and make us to be flames of fire that will consume all the evil that is in this world so that his kingdom can be established on earth as it is in heaven. Without the fire of the Holy Ghost, you know, John says he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, but it looks as if we have chosen the Holy Spirit, we are afraid of the fire. Hence, the world is defeating us. So I would like us today, 
first and foremost, I want us to repent before God that we have failed to fulfill our God-given mandates. We have neglected the fire of God because we are afraid that the fire will purge us and remove every evil in us. We don't want to pay the price of being purged by the fire. And we have ignored another leg that was promised to us that we should operate under the fire of the Holy Ghost, not the strange fires, but the fire of the Holy Ghost. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we want to thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for the grace that you've given us for your calling upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, Heavenly Father, to forgive us, my God, for neglecting to cover the Lord to do will in the mighty name of Jesus Forgive us for neglecting the baptism of the Holy Spirit the fire upon our lives and Father, we have done so much damage because we do things in our own way my God who has been held by your fire in the very way Jesus Christ of Nazareth we give you praise to honor we glorify the spirit of the living God we thank you Father that it is by your fire that we can take this world upside down my God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we ask you, Father, that we cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and draw us closer to you by the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have prayed with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. 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 Our next prayer point is, I want us to ask God that this morning we are moving from our comfort zone, from where we are used to. We are getting to the upper room with an expectation that the Lord will meet with us. Without an expectation, we cannot receive anything from God. He meets us according to our expectation. And as we move to the upper room, let us have an expectation that he will baptize us with his fire in the name of Jesus. Let us move, you know, spiritually, you need to climb up the ladder. You need to move to an upper room place where there isn't any noise because the reason why they moved from the ground floor they were running away from all the distractions, the discouragement, all the issues that were standing as blockages before them. So this morning, let us move to that level and ask God to fill us with his Holy Ghost fire and baptize us and burn everything that is not of his in us. In Jesus' name, can we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we choose, Father, this day to move from our comfort zone to what us to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father, that Lord, as we climb my God to the upper room, you will be with you and have an encounter with you, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you for your heavenly my God, for your baptism of the in the name of Nazareth, we thank you, Jehovah, that you are God who is above all situations. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, fill us, my God, and baptize us with your Holy Ghost fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your fire burn in our bones. Let your fire burn in every area of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, consume us with your 
you know, Moses said. Unmute, please, Mama. Sorry. Moses says to the Lord, without your presence, without your fire, without your pillar of fire, we are going nowhere. Because he knew that he needed the fire in order to overcome the nations that were before him. Even to, today, this morning, I want us to say, Lord, here we are send us, we thank you that you have sent us, but without your presence, without your fire, we are going nowhere. Equip us so that we can turn this world upside down and win souls for your kingdom because your fire is burning in us to change this world. Can we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, just like the Moses, my God, of old, we want Lord, to say, Lord, we Lord, are going nowhere Lord, without your presence. Yes, There's so Lord. much that we have done without your presence. But Lord, today, we come back to the apartment and we ask for your presence to go with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask that the blood of Jesus Christ, the fire of God, will go before us, my God. Let it be a pillar of fire, my God, all around us. Let it be our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you praise, we give you honor, we glorify you, my God, and take us to be the pillars of fire, to be flames of fire, in order to end this world with the devil. Without your fire, let in Jesus' mighty name, that we have prayed with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Lord, we are with. We thank God for everything. Let me just round up. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your fire. We thank you for the baptism of fire. And I pray, Father, that, Lord, your fire will burn within us. Your word, my God, as it is being spoken, will burn within us. It will transform our lives, my God, even as you usher us into the nations. Lord, we will be carriers and couriers of your presence, of your fire, my God, and destroy all the works of the enemy as we, Father, as we release and build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, that Lord God Almighty, you are sending us not not alone, but with your presence before us, around us, and behind us. And the enemy will never defeat us because we will be more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to serve. I will hand over to you, Pastor Light. Amen. Thank you so much, Ma. God bless you abundantly. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, people of God, we give thanks to God this morning. It is all a privilege to be in his presence. I want us to ask the Lord, please, I want to ask the Lord to give you inspiration over what I want to say here this morning. And the prayer we're going to pray that God will grant you insight, insight into what is about to be said. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to help us. Lord, help me. Help every one of us. Can you unmute yourself and pray, please? 
Omit yourself and pray. Omit yourself and pray. Help each and every one of us, my Father. Yes, Lord. Help each and every one of us. Jesus mighty and we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give us understanding. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I appreciate the, the, the willingness to be available this morning. It is to your own blessing that you made it. We usually don't meet on Saturday and Sundays, but because of the ongoing fasting, we are meeting for Saturday, both morning and evening, Sunday, both morning and evening as well. So, Thank you for your understanding, but I'm sure God in his infinite wisdom arranged it that you should be here this morning because we are going to be discussing and praying over something that is so vital in your life and in your destiny and in God's program for your life. And that is about entering into the place of wealth, entering into the place of the riches, the riches Christ paid for with his life for you to access. This is very interesting. And I believe wherever God is, he is like, oh, that she will understand this. Oh, that he will understand this. Oh, that what he's about to drop here, you will capture it. I don't think there is anything I'm going to say here now which you haven't heard before, possibly. Or maybe you have even heard it in a better way. But it is the spirit with which you receive it. It is the faith with which you receive it that will mark a turning point in your life. With this fast that is going on, God is interested in unlocking the fullness, unlocking, releasing the fullness from heaven into your life. Now, I'm going to address two things, partly and then in the evening, I will continue it because I don't want to do much of talking, all right? My target is that by 6.30, we get into prayer. Now, the point is, why should the righteous prosper? Why should the righteous prosper? That is the question. And put it differently, why does God want the righteous to prosper? Why does God want the righteous to prosper? This is the first question I'm going to address. Number two is how, how does God plan? What is the plan of God? How did he plan to prosper the righteous? The first question is why? The second is how? Very important. I want you to capture this so that when we're praying, our prayer we carry, you know, we, 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 we have a reason. We have a, a biblical, you know, and redemption, you know, um, based um, reason, reason. Okay. Now, the first thing the Lord laid it there, of course, this can turn into a book, but I'm just going to speak three points of thought now and then. In the evening, I will complete it, and then we pray. Even the two minutes are not enough to exhaust this matter. But God selected key ones that will help you and help me to enter into the riches, into the wealth. He paid for. He paid for it. He paid for it, and is waiting for you. Number one, the scripture laid in my heart, which I've spoken eloquently about here, you know, on this platform since we began. Psalm chapter 24, verse number one, said the earth is the Lord 
and the fullness thereof. All right, different translation. The earth is the loss and all the fullness, all the fullness. Now, the, the, this one says, the earth is the Lord's. The earth and everything in it, the earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. Good news says the world and all that is in it belongs to the Lord, belongs to the Lord. The earth and all who live in it are his. Now, this is a fundamental understanding you must capture. You go from believing it to knowing it. That's the difference between I believe this and I know this. Knowing that the earth and all of its fullness, all that are on earth, all that are on earth, the visible and invisible, there are many things on earth that are not visible. For instance, in the, in the, in the atmosphere, the, it's, it's open, but it's saturated with all kinds of electrons, all right? All kinds of waves that can be transformed into different things. It's amazing to know how Israel is producing water by setting up some equipment, you know, that turn the air into water, that turn air into water. How could you have believed it years ago that you can make water out of the air? The air, I mean, visible and invisible resources. There are many resources that are not visible. The solar energy is not seen with the eyes, but one of the rich, some of the, in the future, the richest of people, one of the things they will embark on, they will need to embark on is energy supply, energy drawn from the solar system. The solar system is one area that has not been even touched. It is still a virgin ground that needs to be explored and maximized. So a lot of resources are in the atmosphere. A lot of resources are in the, in the waters. A lot of resources are around us, in the trees, in the grasses. A lot of resources are bound. They're not just gold and diamond and oil. No, there are multiplied resources hovering everywhere that are not visible, okay, but they are real. Now, all that are in the earth, the visible, the invisible, resources and everything that we can see belongs to God. And God can't wait to get it into the hands of his children. But the issue is, are they able to see it? Are they able to understand it? Are they able to discern it, interpret it, and take hold of it? So this is one of our prayer. Lord, help me to see the opportunities around me. Help me to see it, help me to understand it, help me to possess it. This is one important prayer you need to pray through this period because there are more around you than the ones you see. There are more around you than the ones you know. Thank you, Father. Wow, this, I can stay on this for the whole day, really. But there are many things I want to say. Number two, God said to me, are you aware that I glory and I delight myself in the prosperity of my children? You must understand that God delight, God desire is in the prosperity of his children, which uh, Psalm chapter 35 verse 27 made so clear. Psalm 35 verse 27. He says, let, let them shout for joy and be glad and that favor the righteous cause, all right? Let them do what? Shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure, which has pleasure in what? In the prosperity of his servants. In the prosperity of his servants. Now, he says, may those who want to see me 
acquitted shout for joy and say again and again, how great is the Lord. He is pleased with the success of his servant. He is pleased with the success of, of his servant. I know that prosperity or success or, or well-being cuts across different aspects. Some people, the prosperity they are praying for is not finance because they're already too rich that they don't even know what to do with money. But now they need the prosperity of their soul. They need the prosperity of their body. There are people who are wealthy but not healthy. God wants us to be wealthy, healthy, and mentally sound. That's why he says, I wish above all things, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. Above all things, above all things, that you might prosper, that financial prosperity, and be in health, that health prosperity, and you know, even as your soul prospered, that is spiritual prosperity. These are three-dimensional prosperity, three-dimensional, di you know, you know, um, richness or, or wealth. Christ died to make happen for you, health-wise finance-wise, and spiritual-wise. He was made poor, that through his poverty we might become rich. That is, has to do with financial richness and every other aspect. In terms of health, the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed so that we remain healthy, all right? And in terms of spirituality, of course, Jesus Christ, to give us life, he became what we were, that we might become who he is, exchange of life. He met us dead. He came to give us life because those who to be to be to be living in sin, it means that the person is dead. He came to deliver us from sin and to bring us into the righteousness of God, and that gives us spiritual prosperity. So now, what have I just said? God delights. God delights Himself when He sees you prospering. Why? Now look at number three, Revelation. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. I think I'm going to dwell there. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Thank you, mighty God. Now, okay, before I go there, remember I spoke about Revelation chapter 8, verse, verse 12. Re Revelation chapter 5, rather, verse 12. Now, the Bible made it so clear that God, through Christ, Open the seal that the enemy locked, and that seal, one of them was to ensure that you don't access power. The second was to ensure you don't access riches and wealth. All right, that's where we are today. From tomorrow, we're entering into the other seal called wisdom. Wisdom. Now, these are the horns with which you will conquer in this your lifetime. These are the, the, the forces, the keys with which you will open the doors that are set for your wealth, that are set for your wealth. One of the entrance keys into the wealth Christ paid for is what? The wisdom of God. We shall look into that. But for today, I want you to understand that Christ has received for you. He has received for you. He has received for you power. He has received for you riches. Okay? Now, have you received this? You must understand that he paid the price to receive this for you. Remember what I'm talking about? Why should the righteous prosper? Why should the righteous be in wealth? Number three is Christ has paid for it and received it for you. So it is with him. His, your prosperity, your riches, your wealth is in Christ and is with Christ, is in Christ, is not in the other nation, is not with somebody, it is in him. Your blessings are in him. Your blessings are in him. Now, in 2 Corinthians, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, you know the grace of God. Chapter 8, verse 9. He said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, rich as he was, he made himself poor. Rich as he was, he made himself poor for your sake in order to make you rich by means of his poverty. Look at that. 
King James says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, yet for your sake, he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Through his poverty might be rich. Now, this scripture, you must understand it and believe it and take hold of it and personalize it, that Jesus Christ, being the maker of the heaven and the earth, made himself voluntarily, intentionally, purposefully, became poor, that through his poverty, you might become rich. Now, it's important you understand that it says, in order to make you rich by means of his poverty, that's good news. The HCSB says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are talking about double grace. And that double grace we are talking about, that double grace, unmerited favor, unmerited goodness, undeserved kindness, undeserved kindness of Christ. It says, through though, though he was rich, but by virtue of his grace, Okay, for your sake, he became poor, so that he, by his poverty, you might become rich. So you becoming rich, you becoming rich. I'm talking about financial richness. We often talk about spiritual richness here. We talk about mental richness here. We talk about anointing and all of that. But here we are talking about financial well-being, financial wealth, financial riches. He became poor so you might become rich. If there is nothing you can remember this period, this should be one of them. If you are going, whether you are driving or you are cooking, you are working, you are anywhere, you are lying down, you're sleeping. Cannot hear you anymore. anymore. Is it just me or you guys can't hear Pastor Light? Yeah, I can hear him. I cannot hear him. I can't hear him. Okay, I'll contact him. Okay, I'll contact him over the phone. Just bear with us, please. Okay. So sorry for what happened. I, sorry for that. I was disconnected because of a network issue. All right, um, let's continue. Now, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17, it says, The angel also told me to proclaim 
the Lord Almighty says that his cities will be prosperous again and that he will once again help Jerusalem and proclaim the city. King James, I prefer, says, cry yet, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. We have always talked about this. He said, my city through prosperity, my city through prosperity shall, shall spread abroad. Now, why should the righteous prosper? I will stop at this point because there are a number of other points on this matter which I will talk about in the evening. Number one, the earth is the lost. Everything that I created visible and invisible was created by God for his purpose. Number two, God delights in the prosperity, in the prosperity of his children. Number three, we see here that Christ Jesus has paid, he has paid the necessary price required for you to enter into the blessing, the wealth, the riches that God created for you. He has paid the price. Number four, we saw that the prosperity of the people of God leads to the expansion, the spread, and the enlargement of God's kingdom. He says, my city through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. My, my, my city through prosperity, not the prosperity of the unrighteous, but the prosperity of the righteous through our financial prosperity, our mental prosperity, our spiritual prosperity, the kingdom of God will be expanded. So if the prophecy of, uh, of Daniel we are a song, I mean, the, story, the revelation of Saint Daniel that was given to, to what's his name now, Nebuchadnezzar, where a stone was caught without hand and he smashed the image and grew and became like a mountain and filled the whole earth, which is symbolic of that name Jesus that will overtake the world, that will fill the whole earth. If that must be fulfilled, if that must be fulfilled, then the righteous need to prosper. The righteous need to prosper. It is true our prosperity that the kingdom of God will spread abroad and conquer the world. And you know that better. Number two, how can this be? How can this be? How can this be? Number one thing I want to mention is that these riches which are in Christ, these riches, you must understand that these riches are in Christ. They are in Christ. They are in Christ. And for them to be in Christ, you need to be in Christ, abide in Christ in order to access them. That makes sense. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, now the scripture made it so clear, all right? Now, and I need you to please person all the scriptures I read here, I want you to personalize them. Personalize them now, please. He said, for, thank you, Lord Jesus, blessed be your name. Now, I wish somebody has new living translation here. It would have helped me. But let me read it from the good news. It said, for it is he who is, for it is he who is the yes and all of God's promises. This is why through Christ Jesus, no, 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 I don't, I can't, somebody with new living translation read it for me. It said, for every one of God's promises is yes and in him, therefore, the amen. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse 20. He says, for every one of God's promises is yes in him. Okay. Therefore, the amen is also through him by God's glory through us. Now, I would have loved it in, please, the media department, I would appreciate it if you can get us, um, what do you call it? The New Living Translation. It will help us a lot. Now, the simple thing there is that the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Okay? All this prosperity we are talking about are fulfilled in Christ. Now, let me read it from the, this translation, the translation I'm talking about. Where is it? Show me, please. Verse 20. He said, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes and through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascend to all. All right. Now, the point is 
every of God's promise, the promise to give you good health, the promise to prosper you financially, the promise to prosper your relationships, the promise to prosper you in eternity, all of them are encapsulated inside of Christ. So if you must enter into the riches and the wealth God died, Jesus died to bring you into, of necessity, you must abide in Christ. Of necessity, you must abide in Christ. Of necessity, you must abide in Christ. Now, in John chapter 15, from verse 4 to verse 5, John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. You can project it there for me. Now, the scripture makes us to understand eloquently that in Christ, he says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in me. No more can you, except ye abide in him. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I know you are well-educated, you are well-skilled, you are well-trained, wonderful. You are well-connected. But Jesus is saying here, for you to enter into the fruitfulness, the fruitfulness, the productivity, the wealth and riches he has planned for you, you need to learn to abide in him, abide in him, stay focused in him. He said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. But when you abide in me and I abide in you, you abide in my word and my word abide in you, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. Our discussion is how can we enter into this wealth, these riches? We are saying that you enter it by abiding in Christ because it is in him, it is in him that the wealth has been endorsed and packaged into Number two thing, which I'm going to see, and then we'll get into prayer. Second Corinthians chapter nine, from verse eight to verse 11. Second Corinthians chapter nine, from verse eight to 11. Now, Paul, in his vast knowledge and his vast revelation of the ways of God, has this to say. He said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace, all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency. Please, um, the media, give it to me in different translation. In the, the HCSB translation. Now, he says, God is able, God is able uh, to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make every grace overflow to you, every grace overflow to you, so that in every way, always having everything you need, listen, in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. Good news says, and God is able to give you more than you need. Please, if you can't believe anything this year, believe this one. Because what you believe is what you become. He said, God is able to give you more than you need so that you will always have all you need. You will always have all you need. You will always have all you need for yourselves and more than enough for every good cause. That is a revelation. Don't just read it as one of the scriptures, but read it revelationally and ask God to help you to understand it. That God is has given you the grace, and that's what we're receiving. Lord, let this grace come upon me that will make me to be what? That will make me to have always, always all I need, all right, and more than enough for every good cause, every good program, every good project. I have more than enough for it, more than enough, more than enough. Now look at the next verse, verse number nine. He said, as the scripture said, he gives generously to the needy, all right? His kindness lasts forever. He gives generously, generously to the needy. This is what God wants to bring you into. He said, he has scattered, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. God wants you to get to a point in life where you can give generously to needy people. 
any day, anywhere. Now you need to get there because God wants to demonstrate his goodness to people around you so that through the generosity, through your generosity, people would believe in your God. Through your generosity, people will believe in God. I hope you are aware that Islam and some other occultic organizations are buying over communities, buying over nations with financial generosity. Financial generosity. This is a needy generation. It's a needy generation. So whoever is willing and able to meet their need, they are likely going to dance to their tongue. And that is why God wants to prosper the righteous so that with the riches, they can make people see the goodness of God. And then they will embrace the gospel you have to offer them. Lastly, in verse 10, he said, and God who supplies seed to the sower and bread to the eater will also supply you with all the seed you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest from your generosity. Now, having said that, okay, look at verse 11. He said, he will also always make you rich enough to be generous at all times. I love that. Please take note of that, verse 11. He said, he will always make you rich. This is what we are asking for. Lord, make me rich always, January till December, always in all season, every single day. He said, as you are enriched in every, as you are enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God to, to, through us. And this translation tells me that he will always make you rich rich enough to be generous, rich enough to be generous to all at all times so that you may, you may will, so, sorry, so that many will thank God for your gift, which they receive from us. So that is what I want to say for now. There are a lot of things to unpack in this, but please, I want us in this prayer, first of all, Believe that God wants you to become rich. God wants you to become rich. If you are rich, God wants you to become richer. And that is biblical. But what is it for? Even if you become the richest man or richest woman on earth, by the day, the day you draw your last breath, the day your heart stops beating, the day your heart stops beating and they say you are dead, all right? The moment your heart stops beating and you die, you spill over to eternity. Right there, there is no remembrance of your wealth. There is no remembrance of all you had here. Not even one will be remembered. You know what will be remembered? What you made out of your riches. What you use the riches to accomplish. What you use your riches to accomplish towards the expansion of Christ's kingdom on earth. The life you changed. The impact you made. How you supported God's move. God's work. God's servant. How you changed people's lives. How you wiped tears. How you made the poor to become rich. How you made the poor to become rich. That is what you'll be remembered for. In that verse, he says, he will always make you rich enough to be generous at all times. This is it. Rich enough to be generous at all times so that many will thank God for your gift which they receive from us. Many will thank God. How many people are thanking God because of what they have received from you? How many people are thanking God because of what they have received from you? I know you have the desire, you have the will, you have the will, but the resources are not yet there. And that is what we are praying that this year, the resources will be there so that you will fulfill your heart desire. You will be able to bless and bless and bless so that everywhere people are thanking God. Missionaries are thanking God. Pastors are thanking God. The, 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 the orphans are thanking God. Widows are thanking God because of the gift they have received from you as a person. This is why we are praying this prayer. Not just for you, to, to, to make the intimidate others 
and threaten others with your wealth and position. No, but for you to make people know that God cares, for you to make people know that God cares, shall we therefore begin to pray? First prayer, I want us to begin to thank God, thank him that he is making these things known to you in this at the beginning of this year. Believe me, before the end of 2022, your story must change. Before the end of 2022, your story must dramatically and drastically change because of the understanding God is baptizing you with so that you get your mind shifted, adjusted, repositioned, and get set for a new takeoff. Shall we begin to thank him? Father, in the name of Jesus, please, you cannot meet yourself and begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. My God, live on those Father, now, I want you to remember your riches, the wealth we are talking about is beyond what you are able to achieve by your power and might. That's what we are talking about. There is wealth that Christ had to die to receive for you. And anything that you are to receive from God must be on the platform of faith, on the platform of faith. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it says, if any man must, he said, for he that cometh to God must, must believe, must believe that he is. And that he is what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. A rewarder. God is a rewarder. If there is nothing to know about God, you must know that God is a rewarder. He said, for the one who draws near to him must believe, must believe that he exists. You must believe that this wealth, these blessings exist, exist. All right, God rewards those who seek him. It's not optional, you must believe it. Now, in the book of Matthew chapter nine, from verse 28 to 29, there was this thing that happened, you know, and when he, when he was come into the house, the blind men came, the blind men came to him and Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I am able to do this, all right? Believe you that I am able to do this? And what happened? That was Jesus asking. They said unto him, yes, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now, Jesus saw blind people approach him. He knew what they came for. But he asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe it? I have what it takes. You have the need, I have the answer, but do you believe? They had to ask that question to stay up their faith, to stay up their belief. He said, yes, Lord, we believe. And what did Jesus say? He said, 
according to your faith, let it be unto you. So we want to receive what Christ has, has purchased for us, what he has received for us. He has purchased it. He paid for it. He paid for it. Anything that is receivable from God must be on the platform of faith. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. You will become what you believe. You will become what you believe. Put it differently. What you believe is what you become. Lord, I believe. I believe. So I come in faith to receive. So I want you to receive now that which he has received for you. Receive now that which he has obtained for you. Go ahead and pray. What is the prayer? Lord, enlarge my faith. Unlock my faith. Give me the grace to release my faith. Give me the grace to release my faith. It is my faith that will receive this blessing, this prosperity, this riches, this wealth. It is receivable by faith. So open up your faith and receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, we Father, thank in the you name of because Jesus. you are paid for Father, this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive wealth for this. Because I have faith in you. Because I have my faith. 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 Lord, I pray for you that every man, every woman on this platform, Lord, we have my faith on Lord. Let there be grace to believe you. Grace to believe you. Let there be grace to believe you. Let there be grace to believe you. Grace to believe you. he said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. This is one thing I want you to leave this meeting with here today. He said, God is able to give you more than you need so that you will always have all you need for every, for yourself, for yourself, and more than enough for every good cause. You will always have more than enough for yourself and for people around you. Always have more than enough, verse 11, verse 11 of it. Thank you, Jesus. He said, he will always make you rich. He will always, always, always make you rich enough to be generous to all times, at all times, so that you may, that you, so that many will thank God for your gift which they receive, for your gift which they receive. Now, I want us to pray. I know that you have a good heart. You have a good heart. You want to bless people, but you don't have enough. You yourself, you're struggling. You don't have enough. And that is why we're praying. Lord, whatever it will take heaven to do, let it be done. But can I say this to you? Heaven has done everything that they need to do. Heaven has done everything. The price has already been paid. It is for you to unlock your faith and step out. Step out and do what you what he will have you do. Not what you may want to do. Not what people may want you to do. But what he would have you do. Because there is 
uh, there, you know, there are many plans in the heart of men, but it is only the purpose of God that will prevail. At the beginning of the year like this, people are thinking all manner of thought. Okay, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. Many plans, but there is the purpose of God. Discovering that purpose and diving into it, being dedicated to it, is what will bring the wealth, the riches, which you will need to always meet your need and meet always the need of people God bring your way. Shall we begin to pray? Lord, this is my life. It is me that these scriptures are talking about. Let it be so. Let these scriptures be fulfilled in my life. Shall we go ahead and pray? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call upon you this day, my God. In the name of Jesus. in Jesus mighty name we pray. As we are praying, the Lord dropped something in my heart. He said, I want to release grace on you to unlock the blessings of Abraham, the promises I made to Abraham. Put it differently, the essence of the double grace we are praying for is that the promise of God to Abraham, the blessing of God for, to Abraham might be activated in your life. Might be activated in your life. Now, the Bible said something about Papa Abraham. What did God say? No, just leave this for me. I, I love this. I, I want the, the, the media out there to please project for me Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 verse two and verse three. I, I want us to pray something that will make sense to heaven and earth. Genesis chapter 12, verse one and verse two. Thank you, mighty God. He said, the Lord said to Abraham, go out from the land, go out from your father's land, your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. The next, the next verse, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. Verse 30, please. You will be, I will bless you until you become a description of blessing. You become the description of blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who, who treat you with contempt that all the people on the earth will be blessed through you, mighty God. All the people, all the people, all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. This is where I am going. This is where we are going. And let me use this opportunity to say, you know, remember we asked people to give offering to Israel. We did that. I remember after doing it here, you know, after saying it here, my children came to me one day. I was lying on the bed resting. My children came to me and said, Daddy, uh, you talked about offering to Israel. I said, yes, say, we want to give our own. They gathered the money. I remembered the money I gave to them on the 1st of January, 
you know, they brought all of it plus extra, all of it plus, plus extra. They brought it and gave it to me. Said, Daddy, this is our own gift to Israel. We want to bless Israel. I was shocked. Little children are learning. So they gave it to me and I sent it straight to Brother Z, who is the person that is receiving the offering. And we have sent the money to Israel already. Some people, theirs has not yet arrived at the account. So please, if you haven't, make sure you do so. No matter how small, no matter how big, whatever the law lay in your heart to use to bless Israel, please do. Now, I want you to understand, you are another Abraham in the making, another Abraham rising, rising, rising. Abraham didn't know that it's going to be as it is today. That is how it will be. Some of us may be small now, but our later ends shall greatly increase. That is the promise. So the grace of God is given to you to do what? To unlock, to unlock, to unlock the blessings of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham says that God will bless you and bless you to the point that the only way to describe you is eloquent testimony of blessing. You hear me say this many times, eloquent testimony. You become an eloquent testimony of blessing. The way to describe is that woman whom God has lavished blessing upon, that man whom God has lavished blessing upon, that is God's desire for you, to lavish blessing on you so that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed through you. All, all. If you are blessed, 10 people is not enough. God wants every nation to partake of your blessing. Every nation. That's why we are praying for Africa. When God said to me, get ready, I want to show you double grace. I want to pour out my blessings on you, all right? And I'm asking him, Lord, how do I get a job? He said, no, concentrate on this. Concentrate on this. And as you serve me, I will bless you. As you serve me, I will bless you. God, how? He knows how. He blesses his servant. All right? Now, yours may be God giving you skill to do a work there, a work there, a business there, a business there. God is anointing people for different things so that through that, your blessing will come. Now, God wants to bless you so much that he said to me, I want you to get ready. I want to bless you because I want you to demonstrate my grace across the nations. Demonstrate my grace across the nations. There are NGOs that need to be connected to what we are doing. If you are running an NGO or you need, you know NGOs that have, that have the grace, okay, have the grace to to or have the mission or assignment to empower people please connect them to us because we are getting ready to go out and demonstrate the grace of god across the nation that is the plan of god so i want you to pray this last prayer and what is the prayer lord let the blessings of abraham be activated in my life let the blessings of Abraham be activated in my life. Shall we go ahead and make that prayer? Go ahead and pray. I want to be that woman. I want to be that man that will be a blessing to all the nations. Make me a blessing to all nations. Make me a blessing to all nations. Lord, make me a blessing to all nations. Please unmute yourself and pray that prayer. My God and my Father. Thank 
Now, permit me, please, just give me five minutes. Let us look at Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 17 to 18. He said, and the angel told me to proclaim the Lord Almighty, the Lord Almighty says that his city will be prosperous again. Sorry. Proclaim, again proclaim saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities, my cities shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again, the Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. Then I raised my eyes, I raised my eyes and looked and there was four horns. There was four horns. I lifted my eyes and looked what I saw. I didn't see the prosperity. What I saw was, was four horns. After the angel spoke to him, he lifted his eyes. What did he see? Four horns, four horns, four horns. Then, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what are these? You spoke to me about the prosperity that we bring about the spreading of the city of God. But what I'm seeing is horns. What are these? He says, and he answered, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Okay, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Immediately, the Lord took away the vision and showed him another one. He showed him four carpenters. And then said, I what come these to do? He said, and he spoke saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Now, the point is this. God is... In a, 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 how do I put it now? God is in a, a business. God is in a mission of changing the story of your life financially, bringing you to a realm where you will become an illustration of prosperity as the scripture has said. Prosperity, not prosperity as your economy has said, not prosperity as your, your, your family lineage have 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 limited you no but according to the expanse of the promises of god that are yea and amen in christ but when this was said to zachariah shown to zachariah the prophet and the first thing he saw was what a ceiling he saw a ceiling he saw a horn that horn was the reason why judah and jerusalem could not move forward he said, what is this? He said that these horns are the powers. These are the forces that have limited Israel, that have limited my people, that have limited my families, and making them not to prosper so that my city, my kingdom agenda will prosper as they are prospering. Look at the reason. Look at the hindrance. It is these forces. These are forces of limitation. And what did he show him again? He showed him some, some carpenters. He said, these carpenters, these are angels, spiritual angels on assignment, spiritual angels on assignment. And the assignment is to destroy, to free, to destroy completely all those blockages, blockages. Somebody called them glass ceiling, glass ceiling. I had that word the first time from Brother Z. I was leading prayer somewhere. You know, he invited me to lead a prayer amongst men in his church, and he mentioned that word, glass ceiling. And that was a revelation. A glass ceiling is a ceiling. You see what is on the other side, but you can't get there. You see what is there, but you can't get there. 
there is a glass the enemy has put to block you, you can see your future, you can see the promises, you can see your prosperity, you can see the wealth, but you can't get there, you can't get there. Why? There is a blockage, a blockage. I want us to pray today. There is a vision God is giving to you of who he wants you to be, of the dimension he wants you to get to, and that ceiling must collapse. That ceiling that is blocking you from getting to that blessing, that blessing Blessed place where you become a blessing to all nations, a blessing to all nations. Remember, the Bible says, Thou shalt lend, thou shalt lend to nations, thou shalt lend to nations. That scripture is not just talking about Israel, it's talking about all the descendants of Abraham that they have this favor of God that they will be prospered in whatever they do and they will be blessed so much that they will give out to nations. Now, I will stop here and we pray. Please join me again in the evening. I will be dwelling on this in another dimension because everything God has planned for you, you must take hold of it. By fire, by force, whether the devil multiply it himself against you, God will prevail and give you what he has planned for you. I want you to pray. Every spiritual veil, covering, blockage, glass ceiling that is keeping me from getting at my blessing, collapse now in the name of Jesus. Collapse now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let the angel of the Lord go and smash, destroy, roll away every mountain. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Father, Jesus, we call upon Jesus you. Christ of and Nazareth, every glass in every glass in every pocket, my God, my Bosephra, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm going to pray for you, and after that, I call Mama Clarita again to bless the communion. Father, in the name that is above all names, we thank you because. Before we were born, you have set out works for us to do. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, you have set out works, assignments for us to do. As the body parts differ in their functions, so we differ in the functioning, in our functioning in the body of Christ. And even at that, you have blessed every unit of the body that we will be enriched in order to carry out our respective functions. Lord, I pray for every man under my voice, every woman under my voice, that the grace, the grace to be rich in order to fulfill maximally the function you've created each of us, you've called each of us for, let that grace be released. Let that Man. grace be released. Let that Man. grace be released. In the Man. name of Jesus, let that grace Man. be released. Grace to enter into a realm, a realm where we will always 
have more than enough for the things we need and more than enough always more than enough always mm. having more than enough to meet needs of Thank the ministries Lord. of the ministers of the poor of the Thank parents you, of the relations of our children of our parents you, of people around us always having more than enough to give so that Thank people you, everywhere will be praising you people Thank everywhere you, will be praising you because of the gift we have, we have that we have given to them people Thank everywhere you, missionaries everywhere ministers everywhere people Thank everywhere you, will be praising god will be praising god Thank because you, of the blessing we have given to them because Thank of you. the gift we have given to them lord this is Thank where you, we lord. want to get to where we have more than enough to do mm. your work and do extra to do your yes, work lord. and do extra fulfilling the purpose why we are planted on this earth fulfilling the purpose Thank why you, we live here in the name of jesus let there be a release of this grace let there be a release Thank of this grace. you gave this grace to abraham and that My grace god. made abraham rich in silver and gold Thank rich you, in lord. silver and gold in cattle yes, abraham lord. was rich abraham was rich and his riches were so much that out of abraham the nations of the world are being blessed and you are raising us that we will be the extension of abraham's blessing extension yes, of abraham's blessing extension of the dimension of the blessing you blessed upon abraham this is what this grace is to act out in our life we receive it in the name of god the father god the son god the holy spirit thank you father Amen. by thank virtue you, of this grace poverty is ended permanently by Amen. virtue of this grace the ceiling the glass ceiling is destroyed permanently Amen. destroyed Amen. permanently that that Amen. which we see we will assess it that which Amen. we see we will assess that which we Amen. believe we will become it Amen. that which we believe we will become it that which Amen. we have desired which shall be delivered into our hands that Amen. our desire shall be met our desire shall be met Amen. more abundantly and beyond for you are thank able you, to do exceeding abundantly thank above you, what Lord. we ask think Abra or Lord. imagine according to the faith and grace Marcus that works so. mightily in us father Marcus we thank so. you thank for you answering Lord. us it's a thank new beginning Lord. it's a new yes, season Lord. with yes, new Lord. oil with new anointing yes, in yes, jesus Lord. mighty name we pray amen, amen. and amen and amen Amen. Thank you. I see doors opening for you. Man. I see gates flung open. Man. I see Man. gates opening. Man. I see gift coming into your heart. Amen. And coming into your hands. Amen. I see divine clarity, clarity, clarity Amen. on what to do. Clarity, Amen. clarity on what to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I see God sending help, sending Thank help, you. and Thank help you, us. Lord. Help and help us. Thank help you. and Thank help you. us. Thank you, Lord. Marcus. I see angels taking over your mountains Allah and leveling Kusum. them down. Thank taking you, over Lord. your mountains Marcus. and leveling them down. Thank clearing you, the road. Amen. Clearing the road. Marcus. So Amen. that you can enter unhindered, unhindered into the blessings of heaven. Thank you, Lord. I call Marcus. it the blessings of heaven. It is inexhaustible. You, the blessings Malak of your Marcus. country and your industry and workplace is limited. Yeah. But the blessing that comes from heaven is unlimited. Thank you, Lord. So you are entering there. And Amen. you will be right there. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. Mama Clarita, Amen. please bless the communion for us. Thank you, Jesus. No sick but I ask you. Thank you. So in the Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that you are God who never fails. We thank you, Father, for these elements that you've given unto us that represent your body and your blood. We thank you, Father, that through your blood, everything that has been standing, my God, as a blockage is being opened today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Just as your blood has been a blessing, my God, for the redemption of all mankind throughout the world, we declare today, Father, that even as we partake, my God, of your body and your blood, the blessings that are in your blood, 
the same to the 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 benefits same that are in your blood are being Thank activated in us, my God, that we can be a blessing Thank you, Jesus. to the nations of the world in the mighty Thank name you, of Jesus. Amen. But Lord God Almighty, that which you have purposed for our lives, it yes. will surely come to fulfillment as you fulfilled your purpose through the, your body and your blood in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. We Amen. declare that this juice is no longer just juice, but it is your blood. And it speaks louder than any other blood father that can be used the blood of bulls, the blood of animals, the blood of human beings by mankind to release blessings. We declare you, the blessings that come through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth are being activated us. upon us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your body, my Jesus. God, which was the eternal sacrifice. We declare oh. that this bread is no longer bread, my God, or biscuit, but it is your body. In the mighty name of Jesus, the eternal sacrifice that unlocks everything that the hidden riches in the kingdom of darkness and they are being released into our hands. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Father, that today, my God, your body and your blood take a dimension of releasing all the prosperity, my God, you, that Jesus. the financial prosperity, the material Thank prosperity you, that we have in store for us in Thank the mighty you, name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank, thank you, you, Father. Jesus. We bless and we honor you that as thank we partake, you, my God, it's a turning point thank in you, our Jesus. lives. The glass ceiling is being mm. smashed and we access mm. that which has been mm. hidden from us today in mm. Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. And we can party. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Mama Clarita. The Lord bless you. All right, servants of God, congratulations. Congratulations for that prayer. And uh, like I said, I'm continuing it in another dimension to this evening. Please don't miss it. Number one, I want us to pray for Brother Kodisho. I, I see that today is his birthday. Um, Brother Kodisho, are you there? Hello, Brother Kodisho, are you with us? Yes, amen, I am. Okay, so is it you or your wife? Okay, your wife was the other day, so it's your birthday today. Yes, man of God. All right. So I want us servants of God to pray for our dear brother. He's been working, you know, um, diligently on this platform. And we thank God for his gift to this platform. I want us to pray. Dear, I, I, I don't know why it worked out that this day we are talking about double grace for divine heaven-backed prosperity is your birthday. So I believe God is ending your struggle today. I believe that the, going forward from here, a fresh atmosphere, a fresh oil, fresh cloud of prosperity is coming on you to envelop you, to cover you and to open doors for you. And that is exactly what will begin to happen from today. Your financial struggle has ended. Please, wherever you are, I want you to join me. Let's bless our brother. Let's proclaim double grace for financial prosperity in his life and his entire family. In the name that is above on him, Lord, I stand upon your word this morning. Father, to bless my brother, Patricia. Lord, I to bless. Lord, let the heavens be open over him. In the, the name of Jesus, let heaven over him be open. 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 Name of Jesus, let heaven over condition be open. 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 What you will experience is a great day. Almighty God, bless the beyond. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Amen. Father, we declare your blessing upon Brother Kodisho. From this altar, Brother Kodisho, we declare you are blessed. And your blessing begins to erupt on the east, west, north, and south in the day, in the night. We decree supernatural doors are open for you. Doors that you could not have been able to open for yourself. Things you never could have worked out for yourself. Heaven is taking over to work out wonders for you that will usher you into prosperity that you have never seen in your entire life. It begins this year, 2022. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, we declare doors open. We declare blessings begin in your life. Struggle is over. Walls are to love and you enter your reward. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you, sir. Amen. Congratulations and happy birthday. All right, quickly, some people who were here last night, they gave their name, but there was a little technical challenge we had and they were not able to capture the names before the platform was switched off. So please, if you gave your name and number last night, please give it back again so that we can capture it. We were unable to extract it from the chat box before it was put off. So your name and your number, if you are coming for the first time, please do so. And if you are here last night and you put your name and number, we couldn't capture it, so please redo it again. Sorry to give you such an assignment again. Thank you so much for that. As you do that, I want to remind us the fasting continues. And as you fast, remember to reflect on the scripture. I've been sending out scripture every morning. I will send one immediately. We finish the grace. We share the grace. So go to your scripture, study it, meditate on it. It will expand your mind. It will expand your mind. And you'll be wiser. You'll be stronger. And you will. it's amazing to go through the Bible in one year. It will enrich your heart the more. Some people are doing it two times, three times, but at least you can do it once. And that would be so awesome. God bless you. Thank you so much. Our uh, pastor from, I, 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 the person that wrote Pakistan, are you from Pakistan or that is your name? Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So yes, please. Pastor. Hello, pastor. Yes, sir. Are you from Pakistan? Yes, Pastor, I am from Pakistan. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'll give you a call just after I finish this meeting. We, 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 we thank God for your, for your life. I'm, I'm sure God brought you here. All right, thank you so much. So please, everyone here, give us your name. Those who haven't given it, if you gave it last night, note that we didn't capture it. So please give it back to us now. All right. On that strength, we share the grace. Surely, goodness and mercy Amen. shall follow Amen. us for us all the, 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 the days, days of our lives. lives. And the we shall dwell in the house of the Lord, Lord. 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 Kodisha, and see you again in the evening for the completion of this particular topic. God bless you Amen. and goodbye. Amen. 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 Bless you, Pastor Light. Thank, Thank you, you so much.